Bonjour, it's Jennifer, your French teacher in the south of France. I'm going to lead you through a very comprehensive lesson today on using the imperative in French. Now listen, we're going to talk about using it, uh, making negative commands, affirmative commands, with pronouns, without pronouns, with double pronouns. So no matter really what your level is, you, you can stick with me as long as you feel like you're understanding, okay? Because we're going to start out sort of on simple terms, and then we're going to get into the more complicated stuff uh, toward the middle and the end. Um, quick thing, if you're watching this and you are a member of the Love Learning Languages French Academy, you will want to make sure you follow the steps I have written here. If you are not a member of the Academy, definitely you can still watch the video um, and get a lot out of this and take notes. If you want to know how to become a member of the Academy and enroll in this course, just have a look at, in the description below. Okay, so maybe you got a chance, had a chance to read all of that. Lots of exercises that I'll lead you through with audio included um, and listening comprehension stuff. Okay, I think you're really going to like some of these new uh, exercises. I've, I've made a few changes a few improvements, so be sure to check it out. Let's go, the imperative mood. Uh, now, look, the first thing, the first uh, step was for you to actually print out your cours. This is so that you can read along with me, uh, listen closely, and everywhere you see the little hand with a pen in it, that's where I want you to write your answers, okay? You're gonna write everything that I'm also going to write. So when you uh, when do you use the imperative? So this is just to give commands, giving orders, expressing wishes. It's direct, and you know I, some people say, "Oh, the imperative. When are you going to give people orders?" Listen, it's not like you're walking uh, into a store and telling someone you don't know, um, "Give me that bag of chips," <laughs> you know. But you might tell somebody, there's so many ways we give commands and you don't think of them as commands. You might tell someone, um, you know, uh, make the salad, please. Or you might tell someone, uh, come sit down next to the fire. You see, commands are not always this real negative thing. We use them all the time. It's easy. If you're a beginner, I mean, I say it's easy. If you know how to conjugate verbs, it's easy. There are only three forms in the imperative, chi, nu, and vu. And when you think about it, it's because um, the only way you can give a command is if you're speaking to someone, and that would be the you form, whether it's chi or you. Or the nu form, that's where you're included, so it's like a suggestion. It's like you're saying, let's do something. Do you see how I've done this with the verb choisir? We've got our present tense. Tu choisis. Look, in the imperative, I just take tu off. I don't need it anymore because I'm not saying you choose. I'm saying choose. Or vous choisissez becomes choisissez. Choose. Nous choisissons becomes choisissons. Let's choose. And guys, they all work like this. You just have to know the tu, vous, and nous form in the present tense, except for three. No, there are four exceptions, four irregular verbs. I'll show them to you in a little while, okay? Uh, but first, let's look at the verb pana. Now, how do you conjugate this? Um, in the present tense, we know that prendre is je prends with an S. So the imperative would just be what? Prends. So you might say, well, when am I going to use that? You know, you might tell someone something like, prends ce stylo. Here, take this pen. You see, there are many ways you can use prendre. And what about, oh my goodness, did you see what I just did? <laughs> I put je instead of tu. You guys have to tell me when I do that. Tu prends with an S. Okay, all straight now. Now, how about the vous form? Vous prenez, d'accord, becomes prenez put whatever you want after it, and it still means take. And then we have the nous form. Remember, this is a suggestion. So nous prenons, 
that means we take, so we're going to say prenons, right? So that means let's. Hey, what if I wrote, um, uh, what if I wrote prenons le thé, prenons le thé vers 4 heures. Remember, the verb prendre doesn't always mean to take. It can also mean to have when you're talking about food and drink. So that means let's have tea around four. Tu vois? Okay, so drop the S in the tu form. What is this about? So it's an exception. Um, French is full of exceptions. And here's one more to add to your list. It guys, and it has everything in the world to do with pronunciation. You know, these exceptions always have to do with pronunciation, which is why French is so very pretty uh, to listen to. If you have an ER verb, now remember, this is super important. We're not talking about all verbs dropping the S in the tu form. We're talking about ER verbs, you know, parler, gagner, manger, all of those ER verbs, as well as the verb aller, d'accord? Even though it's not a regular ER verb, it still is included. And then verbs like ouvrir. Have you, have you learned verbs like ouvrir? You have ouvrir, souffrir, couvrir, découvrir. There aren't that many of them, but they're actually conjugated like ER verbs. Verbs like these, you have to drop the S in the two form. So, and you'll see why later, because of course we're going to do some exercises uh, together. But the imperative of tu parles, for example, you need to write this down, would be parle. No S. Parle. And of course it means speak. Look up here. When we were talking about when I got confused and I wrote je prends instead of tu prends, and then I said with an S. The reason why I said with an S is because, look, the verb prendre, look up here, prendre, that's not an ER verb. And it's not a verb like ouvrir either. And it's not aller. So I'm going to keep my S in that situation. But here we have, what is this tu vas? What verb is that? Yes, it's the verb aller. So we're just going to take the tu off and in the imperative va. No S for now. Because later there will be. I'll show you something later. But va means go. So if you're telling someone, you know, va au parc then that's how you wrote it. You're not going to say va au parc. Va au parc. D'accord? C'est comme ça. That's just the way it is. This is still sort of the beginning part of the lesson. So if you're a sort of a beginner, but you're not so much as of a beginner that you don't know some verbs, stick with me for a little bit longer. I still have some things I can show you. Tu ouvres. Okay, that's ouvrir in the tu form. So ouvre. Uh, without the S, of course. So you might say, ouvre cette euh, lettre. Ouvre cette lettre. D'accord? Open this letter. D'accord. Okay, so I told you that there are four verbs in the imperative that are irregular. And so they're être en avoir, savoir, and vouloir. Um, the one, the one that I think you really, really, really need to know, if four is just too much, the one you really need to know is être. Because how often are we telling someone to be something? You know, be on time, be good, <laughs> those kind of things. The, the other ones, avoir, savoir, and vouloir, are good to know. Uh, I'll show you some examples. But first, you need to write, you need to find out how, you know, what makes them exceptional, and how do you write them? Remember, we're only talking about the tu, vous, and nu forms. D'accord? So these are commands or requests. So, être, the, the uh, imperative form of être in the tu form is soi. Okay? Soi. So, I'm just going to write soissage because you hear that a lot. Soissage means behave. Right? And I know sage means wise, but it also means behave when you put soi in front of it. How about soyez sage? I'm putting an S on there because I'm assuming we're talking to a 
group of our friends who are going out tonight. Behave yourselves. Soyez sage, right? Uh, and then what if you're part of it? Soyons sage. Let's be good. Come on, let's behave. Soyons sage. Voilà. So that's the verb être. You're not going to like the verb avoir because there's so many vowels included in this and you're going to be like, oh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you until I have it all written down though. So here's the two form. Okay. No S on the two form of this one. Up here on, on soi, we keep the S, but on this one we don't because it's French and we love it. How about this one? The new form. Oh, I messed up up here. I was supposed to put this in the new form and this in the new form. Okay, does that make more sense in case some of you were about to start writing me emails? <laughs> okay, so this in the two form. In the new form, it looks like this. And, oh, Jennifer, it looks like this. And in the vu form, it looks like this. Now, I said you're going to hate this verb because of all of the vowels and stuff. But listen to the way it's pronounced. The two form is e. Just e. Okay? Um, maybe e, like that. It's not i or something. It's just e. This one is pronounced e yong. Just the way it's written, really. But a lot of times I hear people who want to say ayong. It's ayong. Just imagine there's a P in front of it, like pe, ayong. And of course, the vu form, ayye. Okay. Uh, the verb savoir means to know, right? So in the two form, oh, that's no space there. In the two form, it's sash. No S. <laughs> Does that look familiar, sash? Uh, if you've studied the subjunctive, it looks familiar, right? How about in the new form, in the new form, sachons, and in the vous form, sachez. Okay. Sachez, c'est de leçon avant la fin de la semaine. <laughs> know this lesson before the end of the week, okay? Uh, it looks a lot like the subjunctive, but look, it's not, they're not spelled exactly the same. They don't have the same endings, so be careful with that. And maybe you haven't learned the subjunctive yet, and that's okay. Uh, now, the verb vouloir, this one, it, when you use it in the imperative, it's really formal, and it's very difficult to directly translate into English. Some people say it's hard to pronounce, too. But look at this. In the two form, no S, it looks like that. Veuille. What word does that rhyme with? Uh, so, veuille, uh, like feuille. You learned how to say feuille by now. So, veuille, feuille. In the new form, And in the vous form, veuillez. But what does it mean? So vouloir means to want, but how can you even begin to put that into a command? It doesn't translate that. Remember, uh, what if I said veuillez m'excuser? And you're like, uh, want to excuse me? That's not what it means. It's just a very polite way to say, please excuse me. So can I just say, excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît? Yes, you can. If you want to kick it up on the, on, you know, on the, the level of being polite, <laughs> then add a veuillet to it. It's super formal though, okay? Voila. So if you are kind of a newbie to French, that might seem like already a lot because you have to know how to conjugate verbs and even irregular ones in the present tense. Now, if you have learned some pronouns, and I'm just talking about le, la, les, 
lui, le, i, en, and eventually le, te, lui, et vous. <laughs> Just a handful. If you've started learning those, then let's have a look at this. I'm going to show you how to use one of those at a time. Just one at a time. Uh, and you know, when you're making commands in French, and when you have a pronoun in there, it really matters whether your command is going to be affirmative or negative. You'll see why, okay? I don't need to read everything that's written there for you. You can go back and read it in your notes later. But I'm going to show you some examples. So we're going to do some translating using pronouns. Write to her in the vous form. So remember, all we have to do is take écrivez. That's just the present tense form. We leave the vous off. So when you're writing to someone, uh, what if you're writing to someone named, um, name the particular okay, écrivez à Jennifer. You have à Jennifer, right? What if you want to replace that with a pronoun? Well, it's an indirect object, right? So if you have an indirect object, you know that because there's an à ah before the name, right? then you have to use lui, even if Jennifer's a, a girl. So when you're in the uh, imperatif, then you are going to say uh, écrivez hyphen lui. Écrivez lui. Anyway, that's kind of small. Okay. Écrivez lui. Got it? So you need that hyphen. That's pretty straightforward. Now this next one, hurry up, Be, watch this real closely because in the exercises that follow the lesson, you have, we have a lot of reflexive verbs in there, okay? And in, in all of the exercises, you have an audio that you can listen to and I will talk you through it and I'll remind you of things that I'm teaching you in, in today's lesson. But when you have a reflexive verb, you have to take care you just can't forget about the reflexive pronoun. Okay, so hurry in the two form is dépêche. Without an E because it's an ER verb. So when you have, here's something that's a little different. When you have a reflexive verb in the tu or je form, something different happens. It, you can't say dépêche te. You probably know that anyway by now. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. You can't do dépêche to. So what do we have to change it to? Dépêche, without an S, toi. And the same thing would happen with a M in an affirmative command. It, it would become a moi. Uh, okay, dépêche toi. Here is the letter. Go on and start writing it if you know how to say it. Voici la lettre. And la lettre is what we're going to be replacing with a pronoun. That's a direct object because it answers the question, what? Here's the letter. What is it? It's the letter, direct object. Read it in the vous form. So your verb is lire. What's lire in the vous form? Lisez, hyphen, and then la lettre is just la. D'accord? Lisez-la, s'il vous plaît. I should write, s'il vous plaît. How about this one? What beautiful shoes. Do you know how to make an exclamation like that? So, shoes are chaussures, right? And beautiful is belle. So, beautiful happens to be one of those adjectives that comes before the noun that it describes. So, I'm going to write belle. You know about those bags, adjectives, beauty, age, goodness, and size. Those are the ones that come before the noun. But what about the word what? Now, if we're making an exclamation like this, then we can just write quelle belle chaussure. Yeah. Okay, let's buy them in the new form. So, achetons hyphen, and then what we are replacing are the shoes. They're plural, direct object, achetons-les. D'accord? Uh, let's give the money to them. Again, we're making a, a request, a suggestion. So, donnons 
l'argent. Now, what am I, where am I going to put to them? Because I've got to take care of that. That's your pronoun. Remember, if you're giving something to somebody, that's à quelqu'un. So that makes it indirect. And so, you know, à quelqu'un, indirect. Now, in this case, it's plural, right? Them, so you've got a leur. De nom hyphen leur, oops, l'argent. Comme ça. Okay. All right. Sticking with me. The book. Put it on my desk, please. Alors, le livre. I did that because I wanted you to know that le livre is what we need to replace with a pronoun. So put it. The verb mettre in the vous form is mettez, oui, hyphen. Le, because le is le livre. Now, where do you want to put it? Sur mon bureau, s'il vous plaît. D'accord? Listen to me. This is not reflexive, but we're going to get to see something very interesting happen with to me. D'accord? Because remember, I told you. Hmm, maybe you remember. <laughs> Listen to me, of course, is in the to form. Écoute. With an S, without an S, with an S. Wow, without an S, of course. So, écoute, and we can't say écoute me. And no, et no, et no. So, just like to, uh, it's going to, moi, I'm uh, sorry, me is going to become moi. So, écoute, without an S, moi. Got it? Duck? Okay. Are you ready for an exception to the exception? I love it when this happens in French. Exception to the exception. So, I've told you when you drop the S in the two form. Now, <laughs> I told you that you do that with ER verbs, aller verbs, uh, aller and verbs like ouvrir. But, when you are dealing with the pronouns E and on, you have to keep the S. And I, look, I'll show you why. Remember, it's always about the pronunciation. Okay, so look, by it, we don't know what it is, so we're just going to assume it's a le. Okay, so I would say, achète, without the S, le. Buy it, without the S, okay? There's no reason, there's no good reason to have an S on there. But, if I say, buy, uh, so achète, buy some, hmm, Sum is a quantity, so that means I have to use on as my subject. Now, I can't say achète on because it's not pretty. That, that doesn't, it just doesn't flow. So, what do I have to say? That's right. Achète son. Achète son. Isn't that weird? But that's the way... It is, okay? Achète some. It does sound better. And look at this. Look at him. Regarde, no S, le, because that's a direct object. Regarde le. But look in there, okay, in there, it's a place. <laughs> so our pronoun is going to be E, right? So I have to say, uh, regarde, Z. Regarde Z. You see how it sounds like a like a Z sound? Regarde Z. It's all about pronunci pronunciation. And it matters. Okay? Alright, so are you here? Are you still here with me? If not, put me on pause. Come back. This is a long lesson. Negative commands. Um Negative commands are actually, if you have learned, um, if you've learned how to use pronouns, then you'll notice that when you're usually using a pronoun and you want to say something like, um, I'm giving it to her, okay, I'm going to just write this up here, a little extra, I'm giving her a spoon. <laughs> Okay, we would say, je lui donne une cuillère. 
And so when this is not a command, right? So our pronoun comes before the verb. That's what I mean when I've written up here, this is what you're used to doing with pronouns even when you're not using the imperative. So a negative command, it's just business as usual when it comes to pronouns. D'accord? That's cool because, you know, if you've learned it. So don't do it, please. You're using the vous form of the verb faire, okay? So we begin with ne. A negative command, you always begin with ne. But Jennifer, I thought we didn't have to say ne. <laughs> you don't have to say ne. You can leave the ne off if you want. But, you know, just for the sake of teaching it to you the right way, I'm going to write it on there. Ne le fait with an S. <laughs> ne le fait pas. Okay, of course you can say uh, le fait pas if you feel like it and you're comfortable with not using the ne because that's how French people do it. Okay, One of my students told me the other day that she likes to use the ne so that she'll remember to use the pas. <laughs> and I can understand that, y'all, just one day at a time. Don't do it, please. How did I know to use le? Because this is a general it. Okay, and that's what you do. Ne le faites pas. Don't eat any of it, please. Uh, so, we start with a ne. Okay. Now, which pronoun are we going to use with for a bit? Well, that's the pronoun en. Okay. So, I'll say non. See what happens there? N E becomes an apostrophe. Non. Mange without an S. Pas. S'il te plaît. Non mange pas, s'il te plaît. So the S thing uh, is good for affirmative and negative commands. Okay. Leaving the S off, I mean. How about let's not tell him? This is a suggestion. Let's not tell him. So begin with a ne. Ne. But when you're telling someone something, first of all, nous disons whatever, quelque chose, à Bob, okay. À Bob, that's an indirect object, right? So we know we're going to have to use lui because of that à being there. So, ne, lui, disons pas. Ne lui disons pas. You have an option. You can throw in an optional le if you feel like for that general le, but you don't have to. D'accord? Ne lui disons pas. And one more like this negative command. Your clothes. Let's use a vous form. Vos vêtements. Oh, oh goodness, what have I done? Hold on. Okay, sorry. Vos vêtements. Now we're using laisser with vous. Begin with ne. Replace vos vêtements with which pronoun? Les. Ne les. Laissez in the vous form. Pas dans la salle de bain. There's an optional S on that. Did you know that? Ne les laissez pas dans la salle de bain. Okay. Now things are starting to get fun, and we're moving on up to double object pronouns. Uh, so, you remember when you were learning the order of pronouns, not when you're dealing with imperatives, just the order of pronouns. Maybe you saw a chart, and I'm going to show it to you in a little while. The problem and the biggest pain about using double pronouns with the imperative is that the chart changes somewhat, okay? Um, let me go on and show you what it looks like, okay? Um, D'accord. So let's start with the middle, okay? And actually, yeah, so the middle, we're going to have moi, toi, lui, uh, no. Am I missing something here? Oh, yeah, there's another one down there. Hold on. I want to get everything on here together. That's what had me tripped up. Okay. Moi, toi, lui, nous, vous, and leur. 
And over here, uh, the first pronoun that you would use would be either le, la, or le. And then, of course, at the end, the ones that always come at the last are e and on. So what's different about this chart uh, when, when comparing it to the other chart that you learned when you were learning about pronouns is that, well, your, your moi, oopsie, your moi uh, and toi used to be me and te. And they were way over here in a column on the left before le, la, and le. But now they're going to go after le, la, and le. So that's true for moi, uh, it used to be me, toi, it used to be te, nous is still nous, and vous is still vous. But they have shift spots on the pronoun chart. Okay? Um, let me show you this. Pass it to me in the two form. So we're going to use the verb passer. Pass without an S. Le hyphen moi. We're in an affirmative command. Me changes to moi. Let's look back up here at this chart. Moi is now right here instead of me over here on the left hand side. Again, I tell you, I'm going to show you that other chart in a few minutes and you'll understand why because it still matters. Pass le moi. Now go away. This is a hard one, so I'm going to break it down for you. Uh, you might not know. This might not be familiar to you. When you want to say, um, I'm leaving, uh, I'm going away, you might be thinking to yourself, je pars. Sure, why not? You know, but you can also say, notice here, I wanted you to use the verb aller. And you might be, uh, that doesn't. What? How is that going to work? There is an expression, okay, and it is the infinitive s'en aller, s'en aller. So you would say, je m'en vais. That means I'm leaving, I'm going away. So if it's new to you, that's okay. You can learn something new here as well. But instead of saying, I'm going away, if you wanted to tell someone in a two form, uh, go away. Remember, you, you're not going to need the je, okay, because you don't need a subject. What you will still need is the verb, right, but you'll need it in the to form. And you will still need the pronoun, but you're going to have to change it, right, to agree with you. And then you're going to still need this pronoun on. Now, don't ask me to directly translate je m'en vais, because I've tried for 20 years, <laughs> And, and it's just impossible. You just have to accept that je m'en vais means I'm leaving, I'm going away. Now, if I want to put that in a to form as a command, go away, to form, I'm going to do what? I'm going to put my verb first because it's an affirmative command. Va, without an S, right? Then something really interesting happens. I can't say va en toi. Oops. I, I just can't. Okay? It just sounds horrible and it's horribly wrong as well. D'accord? So what I have to do instead is I have to say va hyphen t apostrophe e n. And that's pronounced va-t'en, va-t'en. So let me back up a little bit. Up here, this big paragraph that I didn't read to you, here's the part that I'm referring to. When me and te are followed by en, they become m apostrophe and t apostrophe, and you move them. <laughs> so this chart that I just showed you, it's going to change again, but only with e and en. I know that's complicated. I do. Okay, voila. But let's move on to the next one. You, this is a good one to know. Va-t'en, go away. Or you might want to know it in the vous form. Allez-vous-en. Oh, Jennifer, the order changed up. Not really. Allez-vous-en. It didn't change because look, vous comes before en. Okay? Uh, let's give it to them. 
I'm going to try to speed up a little because this is getting pretty long. I know. Let's give it to them. Donnons le leur. Let's give it to them. Okay? It is le and to them is leur. Tell it to her. Okay? Vous form. Do you remember how to conjugate vous, uh, the verb dire in the vous form? Because it's tricky. Dites le lui. Dites le lui. You see how that works? So that's one of the hard, hard things about the imperative is, yeah, you do have to know your conjugations. Put them there. Tu. Uh, Maître in the tu form is me. It's with an S because it's not an ER verb. Me hyphen them. There we go. There. Do you know which pronoun that is? I. That's right. Melezi. Melezi. Très bien. You know what you would probably hear people say, though, is me, le, la. And the word la means the word there. I'm just telling you that because for grammar's sake, I wanted to show you something real pretty like that. Me, les, It's It would sound really formal. Me, les, la, much more common. Okay. Almost done. Okay. Negative commands. <laughs> We're going to go back to our normal pronoun order. So, you know, the one that I showed you up here, remember how I told you how different it was to our regular pronoun order? We're going to go back to regular pronoun order for negative commands. D'accord? Because remember, with negative commands, your pronouns are still going to come before the verb. They're not going to get attached behind it or after it with hyphens. So let's just go on and make sure you have your normal pronoun order. And at this point, most of my students who know pronoun order, like the back of their hands, at this point, um, they're usually like, oh gosh, wait a minute. What? So if you're feeling that way, it's okay. Just, you know, make sure you do all of the, all the exercises I have ready for you and use your practice cards and stuff and you'll get the hang of it. Practice makes perfect. So let's write this down in case you have gotten yourself confused. Me, tu, nous, vous. In the normal world of non-affirmative commands with double pronouns, this is where they go in the in the order. Okay. Then we have le, la, and les, and then we have lui, and then we have le, and then we have i, and then we have on. Just to remind you. Okay. Now, if we want to translate, don't take it from me. We're using the verb prendre. Remember, we start with a ne for these negative commands. Ne. Now, which pronouns am I going to need to use? We need a me for sure. And then it, this is a general it, so we're going to use a le. Now, look where they go. The me comes before le in normal pronoun order. And I, ought to, I might write on here, and negative commands. Because, you know, they're normal too. So we're going to say ne, me, le, prend with an S, pas. Ne me le prend pas. You see? Ne me le prend pas. Now, let's not give it to them. So this is a new form. Begin with a ne. Ne. Which pronouns are we going to use? We need something to cover it, and then we need something to cover to them. If you're giving something to them, indirect, that's leur. So we've got a general le, and we've got a leur. Let's just look back up at the chart. Le comes before leur. D'accord? Alors, me, le, leur, de non, pas. When we're making negative commands, we don't need all of the hyphens. That's also something to remember. When you're speaking, no one will hear it anyway. But, you know, I don't know. Some of you might be preparing for a test or something. So, voila. That's how you write it. Ne le leur donnons pas. And then, if you stuck through all the way to the end, this is truly the end. Um, let's do the last one. Don't bring it to me using the verb apporter in the vous form. Begin with a ne, ne, 
and it, we've got m in here because that's to me, and then our general it, since we don't know what it is, m, m, la porte pas. And again, we're going to do that because m, d'accord, um, comes before le, d'accord? So what I encourage you to do, if you are really wanting to work on using uh, the imperatif with pronouns, I encourage you to get these charts, you know? I'm going to come back up here, and I am going to grab this one right here. And you'll, you'll have this, if you want all of my notes, just make sure you download Jennifer's lesson notes, and you'll see everything. Um, I'm, I'm going to put this one right here just so that you can kind of have them side by side and and compare and that way you can see oh yeah I see what she meant the me, te, nous and vous in normal order or negative commands order is different because now the moi and the toi are coming after the le no anyway voila so <laughs> I hope all of that made sense let me know if you have any questions uh, et bon courage. Merci, à la prochaine fois.